Uh, my name is Haven Stumpf, and I'm the Executive Director at Urban Circle Training Center. Well, um, our clientele, we have, uh, we're a training center, an educational facility, uh, which is Indigenous-led, uh, and we, are, uh, our, we service our community, which are Indigenous men and women. Part of our programming includes um, uh, a component called our Life Skills Cultural Component, which is a huge uh, piece of our programming, and it's our, it's our base. And um, this was introduced uh, to Urban Circle. Um, I'm trying to think. Urban Circle's been around for 29 years, going into 29 years, so at least 26 years ago. Um, it was introduced uh, to the programming, uh, Indigenous cultural component, as well as a life skills component. We have four programs, and uh, the academic uh, programs that we do have here, uh, one is called our Adult Education and Employment Program. And that particular program, it's a six-month program. It's offered twice a year. Uh, we um, um, have that program for um, adult students to uh, obtain their mature grade 12 diploma, and it's certified through the 7 Oaks School Division. Uh, we also have three uh, post-secondary Red River College programs. Uh, we've been in partnership with Red River since 1996, and uh, our programming um, is our dual certification health carried health unit clerk, which is a nursing assistant program. It's the one of its kind, so it's been put together to be able to allow our uh, students, our Indigenous students, to go out into the work field to be able to uh, be employed at a higher level with higher skills. Um, um, also, we have our Educational Assistant Program, which is a Level D, and the levels are just the levels of pay scale uh, when they're hired, and uh, the Educational Assistant Program is working in the school divisions and um, many school divisions were partnered with, Seven Oaks, Winnipeg School Division, Louis Riel, and um, uh, soon to be, we're hoping a new partnership in the future as well with River East. Um, our third program, which is uh, uh, certified by Red River College, is our Family Support Worker Program. Uh, that particular program allows people to be able to get their certification and move off into the social uh, work areas. The strengths of these particular program have all been um, evolved from the community itself. And um, what I mean by that is um, I'm going to just give you examples of all three of the programs of how they had come about. Um, the Health Carried Health Unit Clerk Program had come about uh, from the early um, 1990s to the late 1980s. Um, it was talked about through the government of the um, employment equity um, um, kind of um, survey on their huge institutions. And uh, when um, Health Sciences Center had done a survey in regards to the comparison of their patient population versus the Indigenous employees that they had working at the time, it was very, very minimal. Uh, it was quite shocking. Um, and I, I'm going to guess approximately, I would say about 3% had identified employees, had identified themselves being Indigenous, so they recognized there was a huge gap uh, from the workers to the patient population, and they needed to fulfill that as Health Sciences Center serves a huge population uh, population of Indigenous people. So um, they decided to go to Red River. Red River College um, had uh, uh, approached Urban Circle, and we said, no problem in the helping field. We love those programs. It goes hand in hand with what we were offering as well with our life skills and our cultural component. And uh, so away we went off and it's, it's never changed. As you know, uh, the field changes itself, but the actual uh, duties and the skills are still the same required mints to get into that employment. And the employment is um, starting wages are well enough to be able to stay, sustain financially to be able to get off of social assistance, to financially sustain your family and live happily with that. Uh, the Family Support Worker Program, uh, that particular program came about when the whole de-evolution of uh, the Child and Family Services took place and uh, where Child and Family, Winnipeg Child and Family was giving back 
the children to their home communities uh, to be able to look after the children that were in care. And they recognized that they didn't have enough certified workers to assist with that. Uh, so uh, we sat at a table of uh, it's, um, an advisory table and uh, they had uh, suggested that we put a program on. Red River sat part of that uh, table and up came the Family Support Worker Program. This particular program is not offered in the college itself. It's specially molded for our students here at Urban Circle. And um, our third program, the Educational Assistant Program, uh, that particular program came about when uh, we recognized that uh, the school systems were failing our, our uh, Indigenous community and our young people. And we, the graduation rates were not there, people were dropping out, and we recognized that the help is needed more hands-on and to help these young people to get through school. And uh, so up came the Educational Assistant Program. And to measure our uh, statistical, uh, we do um, we do um, we do leaving forms, uh, which uh, of course um, this past we just had a graduation yesterday, and um, from out of our family support worker program, we initially started with 28 people. We have uh, graduated 20, 23 family support workers. In our mature grade 12 program, we had 28. Uh, students and we graduated 21 with their mature grade 12 who are going to go out there into other fields as well. Some come to Urban Circle to apply to our post-secondaries. Others will go out there for employment or to further their uh, into post-secondary. Well, Urban Circle has been um, has been around for 20. We're going into our 29th year. Urban Circle has always um, been delivering a, a cultural indigenous component and uh, that is the that is the soul of Urban Circle of what the heartbeat of Urban Circle of who we are and what we do here and the success has come from that um, and um, you know when we talk about successes we talk about the student themselves initially of them identifying who they are as Indigenous people yeah, it's quite amazing. Um, I, as a former graduate of Urban Circle way back in the days, um, had, um, when I first came to Urban Circle, it was much smaller. It was a woman-only program. It only had one program, and you had to have your grade 12, and I was on social assistance. I was a single mom. And uh, when I had started the program, it was quite intense, and it was all about yourself. And when I had first come to Urban Circle, I recognized that I didn't connect with even myself and my identity or my culture. I had no idea what a smudge was. I had no idea that, uh, you know, um, that this is how Indigenous people had lived or this is part of the culture or this is part of lifestyles. And it was quite amazing. Um, it was quite an eye-opener. And when I started identifying myself and connecting with some of those um, teachings and some of those, um, the cultural components such as the smudge, the prayer. Um, we had done um, shields or sharing of ourselves, um, sharing circles. Um, when I had started connecting with that, and my biggest eye opener was going on a sweat. It was um, such an amazing experience. It was like, um, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just so amazing. It was a, a life changer for myself. And, um, you know, growing up here in the North End, all of my life, I was never um, connected to those because that was the last thing you wanted to be was an Indigenous person. And there was so much racism growing up as well. Uh, my mother, both my parents were alcoholics. And so my mother was uh, always in shame about who she was and my father. And uh, when we had, uh, when I had finally grown up uh, enough to be able to understand that, I had no idea why life was the way it was until I had come to Urban Circle and it started making sense when I started learning about the, the residential schools, uh, the colonization, the decolonization. I, I went back to my mother and I started questioning her and I couldn't believe it that it sounded exactly like my life. And I went to my mother and I says, were you in residential school? 
and her face turned totally white. And she told me if I continue to talk about it, to never come back. And um, so I was quite taken back by that. And I said, well, what do you mean? So I was trying to get more information from her, and she wouldn't. And she started crying. She was very angry, told me to get out. And um, so I left, and then I went to my grandmother, and my grandmother was a little more open. uh, And I think just because of time in itself was allowed to heal some of those wounds. And um, I asked my grandmother, and my grandmother said she was in a residential school since she was four years old. And my grandmother had identified that she was in a residential school when she was two years old in Bertle, Manitoba. My mother was in uh, Fort Alexander. And, uh, you know, and I just think, I asked my grandmother, how could you even go and take your child and drop your child off in some strange place at some strange building and just say, here you go, here's my kid. Have a good life and turn your back and walk away. And my grandmother said she had no choice, otherwise she would be going to jail for that. So it's very unfortunate that, you know, when I started understanding why life was the way it was when I was growing up, and to understand my parents of of the shame that they carried, which wasn't theirs, and the shame and the hurt and the pain and the just everything of of why they self-induced in alcohol and um, and why my whole family was all nuts you know, and and so dysfunctional. And, uh, you know, I just think that no wonder why they are the way they are. When I started learning more and more and more about the history, I had no idea that even existed. I went to school, not once did they talk about stuff like that. So um, here at Urban Circle, we talk about that kind of stuff. We talk about, we bring our elders in. We bring our elders in who have survivors of the residential schools We teach our children that, our our students that it's okay to talk about it. We have our seven natural ways of healing, uh, the seven natural laws, talking, laughing, crying, yawning, shaking, sweating, yelling. And uh, those help us get through everything that we have encountered throughout our lives and to help us heal so we're able to move forward in our life. Our elders teach us the, the seven teachings of how to walk in those ways to be respectful, to be honest, to be truthful, uh, and the others that, um, you know, you learn that here. And uh, they practice, the students practice it within the classroom. And it's a very unique uh, teaching that you can't get anywhere else. When we talk about Indigenous, um, we have, I know the new word is land-based training, Well, we've been doing it for many years, 20 years now, 20-some years, and, uh, um, you know, where we've gone out, we've picked our own medicines uh, for the year for our students. Our students learn about the medicines, the traditional medicines to the modern medicines. We do research. Um, There's so many things that go, go on that it's quite unbelievable. And the first thing that I have to say with with the connection is learning who you are as an indigenous person definitely needs to have that healing we have been hurt for hundreds of years things have been taken taken away from us i'm a first nations woman i don't know any other language but english my mother didn't know any other language she grew up in a residential school only speaking english my grandmother i remember her speaking very little ojibwe um, even when she would have a friend or somebody she would know, very little was combined with English because she lost that in the residential schools as well. And there's so much, you know, just the values of a family. What does that mean to a person that was stripped away? Because there were no families. What role did a mother play? What role did a grandmother play or a grandfather or her father that was all stripped away? And unfortunately, in today, that whole healing component, we have to start, and there's a place that we have to start. And with our students, it's a beginning of their journey and hoping they move forward and take those teachings and move forward so they're able to hand those down to their families.
Well, in 10 years' time, I can see um, Indigenous education um, changing. Uh, I know that the, the school divisions are talking about uh, Indigenous education. I know that, um, you know, that we have very strong leadership in the education, in the Indigenous education field um, to continue to um, bring that forth and to have um, books, to have literature in the, the schools, uh, to learn about some of the history that has really taken place and not to be shamed any longer of that because it's not ours to carry. And um, I always say that education is, is the weapon that our Indigenous people are going to be using uh, to strengthen and to be able to move forward through this. Well, we have um, one of our resources is to every one of our four programs, we have what you call a life skills um, program counselor connected to the program. And the life skills program counselor um, is available to our student to assist not just with educational goals, not just with life skills, but with their personal lives to be able to support them through... Um, counseling through um, maybe they're needing something um, an operation done so they're there with them in the hospital um, supports with having to drive uh, them to daycares at times um, we utilize our external resources as well uh, we have um, um, I don't know um, we have a support worker who is who is um, has his master's degree in um, social work who comes and assists with mental health areas. Um, some of the real huge barriers here at Urban Circle is our, 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 our community and our students are getting younger and younger, and they're coming with larger barriers in place. Uh, and they come with homelessness, they come with gang affiliation, they come with addictions, they come with mental health issues, um, they come with um, loss of... Um, um, you know, loss of identity of who they even are. There are so many, so many um, barriers that our students are coming with. And uh, uh, so we reach out there to be able to get those external resources. So when they leave school, this continues on to be able to support them while they're moving along, whether it be employment or furthering their education. So they're going to be successful. I think that um, here at Urban Circle, what we do is something very special. And I think it's all part of uh, the feeling of belonging and the feeling of, of uh, being accepted and that, um, that um, un, what is it, the un, uh, it's, I know that our, our elder Stella Blackbird, she always talks about love. And she says to be able to love somebody beyond that problem or beyond that barrier, uh, because that's what the people are needing is to be able to love them unconditionally.